Okay, so this physics video is on uh, sound waves, the standing waves and normal modes for sound waves uh, in open and stopped pipes. So chapter 15 talked about standing waves, um, standing mechanical waves, and the normal modes of mechanical waves. Uh, chapter 16 is about sound. Um, and so uh, section 4 uh, relates to standing waves and normal modes relation to sound. By the way, when I talk about chapters, I'm talking about university physics uh, by Young and Friedman, but any physics book is going to have this at some point. Okay, let's start. So let's talk about displacement nodes and antinodes in relation to sound. So a displacement node is where the displacement of the medium is zero. So node equals zero. Um, uh, as opposed to say a displacement antinode where the displacement would be at maximum amplitude. So displacement antinode, maximum. Uh, displacement node is where it's zero, where there's zero displacement uh, of, the, of, the, of the particular medium. Um, now adjacent nodes are always a half wavelength apart. Why is this? Because um, if you think of a wavelength, you know, let's say the wavelength starts at zero, goes to a maximum, hits zero, goes to a minimum, comes back up to zero. So that's a full wavelength, a maximum, a minimum. So there are two zeros. It goes through zero twice uh, in one wavelength. And so the distance between nodes or the distance between zeros is going to be a half a wavelength or lambda divided by two. Uh, that's why adjacent nodes and adjacent antinodes are always a half wavelength apart. Pressure nodes are opposite to the displacement nodes. So where the pressure is maximum, uh, the displacement is zero. But where the pressure is zero, the displacement is maximum. Uh, and so these are, these are an opposite to each other. A pressure node is where the pressure on the medium is zero. That's the same. And a pressure antinode is in terms of the definition. Pressure antinode is where the pre uh, antinode is where the pressure is at a maximum. So a pressure node is always going to be a displacement antinode because where the pressure is zero, that allows the displacement to be maximum. But where the pressure is maximum, that means the displacement is going to be zero. So a pressure node it is, is a displacement antinode, and a pressure antinode is a displacement node. This has to do with with standing waves. Okay, standing waves. Uh, adjacent nodes again are uh, pressure nodes. Adjacent pressure nodes, just like adjacent displacement nodes, are always going to be a half wavelength apart for the same reason I, I already talked about. Okay, so let's talk about open and stop pipes. An open pipe is a pipe uh, that is open on both ends. And a stopped pipe is a pipe that is closed on one end but open on the other. Uh, so think of musical instruments, wind instruments, you know, oboes, clarinets, flutes, these sorts of instruments are, are uh, various kinds of pipes in relation to sound that we're talking about here. Now an open end on a pipe is always going to be a displacement node and a pressure antinode. The pressure is going to be greatest because that's where it faces the world as it were. Um, and therefore the, no the displacement of the sound is going to be zero at the open end of a pipe. So if you have an open pipe that is open on both ends, you're going to have uh, a displacement of the, of the wave as zero uh, on both ends because the pressure is maximum on both ends. A stopped pipe, a closed end, is, uh, is going to be the opposite. A closed end is going to be a pressure of zero because it's not facing the world there, uh, but the, and therefore the displacement at the closed end is going to be an anti-node. And again, I should have put this first, an open pipe, I said it, an open pipe is open at both ends, a stopped pipe is open at one end, closed the other. Okay, we've got some ground rules. Now let's get to the most important part of this section, which has to do with finding the fundamental frequency for an open pipe or for a stopped pipe and, and the uh, overtones, uh, which are intervals of, of the fundamental frequency. See the previous chapter and its videos. So let's talk about an open pipe. Now for an open pipe, again, you're going to have a displacement node at both ends of the pipe, and therefore you only can have, uh, the, for the fundamental frequency, you have only the half of the wavelength, right? Because it's zero. Remember, between two nodes is a half wavelength. And so the fundamental frequency can only be a half wavelength uh, for an open pipe. This means that, uh, now, uh, use this relationship 
the frequency equals the velocity divided by the wavelength, or the way I think of it is the, the velocity is a laugh. V equals LF, or V equals lambda F, and then you can arrange it algebraically around. So since v, uh, F equals uh, V over L, and we said that the, the, the wavelength, we can, only get a, we can only get a half wavelength in an open pipe. And so to get a full wavelength, we, need, we would need two lengths of the pipe in order to get both the maximum and the minimum in. So substituting 2L uh, for lambda, we end up that the fundamental frequency of an open pipe is going to be the velocity of the sound wave uh, divided by twice the length of the pipe. That's going to give you the fundamental uh, frequency. Um, so um, the overtones or the, the modes of this um, uh, frequency are going to be some integer, integer, integer uh, times that. So n equals 1 or 2 or 3 to get the various overtones uh, of, the, of the sound. Um, so that this is for open for open pipes. The fundamental frequency is going to be the velocity of sound uh, in the pipe divided by twice the length of the pipe. And then the overtones are going to be some integer times uh, that fundamental frequency. See the previous chapter. That's a little bit more complicated uh, for a stopped pipe. For a stopped pipe, the length of the whole pipe is only a fourth of the wavelength. And I, the reason for this is because um, uh, you you have you so you have a uh, a node you have a, a zero for the displacement at the open end right but you have a maximum at the closed end uh, because remember the closed end of a pipe is going to be a displacement antinode and the open end of a pipe is going to be a displacement node so you can only get this up to the from zero to the maximum for the fundamental frequency you can only you, you don't get the up and down and up you only get the up you only get a fourth of the wavelength uh, in a stopped pipe uh, for the fundamental uh, frequency and therefore um, the 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 you only get a fourth of the wavelength in a stopped pipe so again substituting that we have a slightly different so for an open pipe, the fundamental frequency was the velocity divided by 2L, but for a stopped pipe, the fundamental frequency is going to be the velocity divided by 4L. Um, and so, now, here's, here's again, you could just memorize it. Uh, we only, for a stopped pipe, it's only odd intervals. Uh, and you may wonder, well, why? Why would it be odd intervals? Well, the reason is because um, you can only get... Um, uh, one, you can only get one of those uh, quarters in a stopped pipe because the the other end has to um, has to get to a, a displacement uh, node at the at the end, and so you have uh, you can only fit an odd number of wavelengths in the stopped uh, pipe. Uh, and so the multiples are, are only uh, odd numbers. The, the key basically is just to memorize that for a stopped pipe, uh, the, uh, the uh, overtones are odd intervals uh, of, the, of the fundamental frequency. Well, okay, there you have it, uh, the section on um, uh, the, w the waves and how they... Uh, normal mode and fundamental frequency for stop pipes and open pipes.